A wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a somewhat unusual rock that's orbiting extremely close to planet Earth that for a very long time has always been a little bit difficult to explain. Here we're talking about a very unusual blue object known as Phaethon. An object that was somewhat difficult to explain until relatively recently, and an object that's somewhat difficult to classify. It's not really an asteroid, and it's not really a comet. It's a bit of both. But what makes it even stranger is that it seems to be blue in color. And so let's talk about this object a little bit more, focus on some of the recent discoveries, and of course some of the recent explanations. But first, let's start with this discovery. And it basically starts in 1983. On October 11th of 1983, the infrared astronomical satellite that you see right here discovered the first asteroid it has ever seen. Actually, this was even the first asteroid to be discovered by any spacecraft out there. And what made this object unusual almost right away was actually its orbit. It had an extremely bizarre and very eccentric orbit that's previously only been attributed to various comets. And it actually was acting like a comet when it was extremely close to the Sun. But it appeared to be an asteroid as well. And even more importantly, its orbit seemed to align with something that has been known to us for many, many years. Its orbit was a direct match to the famous meteor shower known as Geminids. This usually peaks in mid-December, and in this simulation you can basically see why it even happens. Right here, this is where Earth crosses with the orbit of this particular object, and thus intersects a lot of these tiny particles produced by Phaethon over the years. And so in essence, this bizarre rock is also responsible for delivering certain particles to planet Earth, and of course producing the annual event that has been super mysterious until this object was discovered. But there's always been a few questions about this. First of all, how can an asteroid even produce this? And second of all, why is it that an asteroid produced this particular meteor shower? Normally we expect this from comets or from objects that would suddenly release a huge amount of material in the orbit, thus forming a relatively large debris disk. So here's an example from the comet Enki. This is something that's going to be happening in October. And while it looks like some of these questions might have been answered in the recent studies from 2024 that we're going to be discussing today. And I guess let's actually start with this right here, or with why meteor showers are even possible, even though this is an asteroid. And so in one of the recent studies by Sukir and Zalai, the researchers came up with various models trying to explain how these particles are even possible and why there are so many of them in the orbit of Phaethon. And it looks like it might have been not produced in the same way to a typical comet. Here, by reproducing several different scenarios, the only one that kind of made sense suggests that the Geminids very likely appeared rapidly and did not appear like a typical cometary tail. Essentially implying that the origin of Geminids was not from a slow and steady release, but instead was a result of some kind of a catastrophic event, such as maybe an impact, or maybe a sudden explosion on the surface when this asteroid, for some reason, approached the Sun too close. And so in essence, it was never really a comet to begin with. It was potentially always an asteroid that has gone through some extreme changes. But one thing that makes this asteroid stand out is just the fact that even now, it produces a tail. But once again, in this case, it's not really the same tail like a typical comet. And here, because of this object, and actually because similar objects have been discovered in the last few years, we now call these objects active asteroids, not really comets. And actually, the most famous recent case was the active asteroid produced during the DART mission. This was, of course, the collision with a NASA satellite, whose purpose was to redirect an asteroid. And this, of course, created an active asteroid that lasted for at least a few weeks. But there are also some natural asteroids that seem to emit tails when they get really close to the Sun. Here's actually a really cool picture of one of these objects, the asteroid known as Elst Pizarro. And while for Phaethon, it was really the observations in various frequencies that allowed us to understand what's actually being emitted. It seems to emit a lot of sodium, but basically no dust and no ices. So it's definitely not a comet at all. But every time it gets really close to the Sun, it suddenly becomes super hot, 750 degrees Celsius or 1400 Fahrenheit, and goes through rapid brightening, which releases a massive tail for at least a few days. And so it was actually not entirely clear how all of this worked, or even why this asteroid appeared somewhat blue in color. But recent studies provided a few answers. So first of all, the blue color just comes from the fact that the Sun 
evaporated pretty much everything, volatile and red in color, every time the asteroid approached too close. In other words, even though it might have been a different color before, anything organic and anything red or dark red in color has long disappeared, leaving behind materials that make it appear blue. And further spectral analysis of this asteroid determined that it actually resembles something we refer to as CY carbonaceous chondrites. These are often referred to as Yamato type, and they all show signs of drying and thermal decomposition, result of extreme heat coming from somewhere, but most likely the sun. And they all differ from other asteroids because they also seem to contain very high iron sulfide content, which is the case for Phaeton as well. But these asteroids are super rare. Here on Earth we only have six samples, and so we barely know anything about them. But by analyzing them in a lab, we potentially now know why Phaeton is the way it is. Because it looks like every time it passes really close to the sun, even though it has this highly burned crust on the surface, something happens inside of it that then releases particles, producing the tail. And so in one of the recent studies, Martin Soto and his team reproduced some of these effects by using the samples we have on Earth and by figuring out what's probably happening. And it does look like it has something to do with this iron sulfide. So when the surface of this asteroid heats up dramatically, a lot of the iron sulfide minerals start to break down and produce various gases such as sulfur dioxide and even carbon dioxide. But all of this happens inside the crust, basically making Phaeton kind of act like, I guess, some kind of a balloon. And so because it now has all of this gas inside, and because these gases don't escape quickly, only small quantities of these sulfurous gases get released over time while also taking some other particles with them. But because Phaeton is also spinning, every time the surface turns away from the sun, it actually cools down rapidly, with some of these gases then condensing back into something solid, generating new compounds. And this potentially creates a cycle that seems to repeat every four hours. And that's because a single rotation here is approximately four hours long. And so the cycling process, instead of releasing everything all at once, like in a typical comet, instead creates a very slow cycle that's able to slowly emit materials without destroying the rock for many, many, many years. And since we've now discovered almost a hundred similar objects, this can actually help us understand them just a little bit better. And the most important part to understand here is really how stable these objects are and how stable their orbits are. Because in many cases, just like in the case of Phaeton, these are what's known as potentially hazardous asteroids. They do cross the orbit of Earth and do have a slight chance of colliding with the planet sometimes in the future. And since this rock is approximately 5.8 kilometers or 3.6 miles in diameter, this is not a collision we want to experience. But at least now, we kind of understand this asteroid just a little bit better, and we also understand how its cometary emissions seem to work. But I guess more importantly, it looks like its origins have potentially started with some kind of a cataclysm and possibly something catastrophic, maybe a collision with something else that then changed its course, making it approach the sun much closer, or maybe it approached the sun for some other reasons and then exploded in the process. Because there's really no other way to explain why geminids are even possible. This asteroid is not emitting enough particles to produce this, and so the only way this could happen is if this asteroid was much bigger and something suddenly released a lot of materials all at once, eventually resulting in the Geminids meteor shower. But I'm sure we're going to be discovering even more about this asteroid because it is going to be studied by a mission really, really soon. The Japanese Destiny Plus is going to be launched sometimes in 2025 in order to conduct a flyby and to also collect samples emitted by its tail. And so we're probably going to know more about this rock in the next two to three years. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out previous videos on similar subjects in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.